just gone 1034 News Talk 106 to 108, and uh, he's TV's longest serving cast member and a star of TV's most famous soap. I'm delighted to say actor William Roach, best known to you as Ken Barlow, joins us now. William, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Nice to see you. I talked to you on the phone before about a year ago, but nothing prepares you for seeing you in real life. Is it that bad? Honestly, I mean, you have the secret of youth bottles. How have you managed to do this? You look Well, I don't know. Everyone says this. It's just the luck of the draw with the genes. My mother was vital and energetic at 95, and I'm not far off that, so... <laughs> you have a way to go yet. You're, you're going to be 80 this year. I'm going to be 80 next year. A next, lot of people... 80 in April, yeah. A lot of people really can't believe that. I, 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 well, you know, it's funny enough, I can't believe it either. Yes. <laughs> because uh, they say you're as old as you feel, and uh, the body won't quite do what it did in some areas, but other than that, I feel younger and happier than I've felt, really. That's a fantastic thing to be able to <laughs> say, isn't it? Uh, when I was telling people you were coming on this morning, um, I was saying, is there any question you'd like to ask them? And the number one question people want to know about is your hair. They think you have the most fantastic head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you know, uh, it's genetic, isn't it? And uh, I don't think there's any anything you can do about it. If, if you parents have got male pattern baldness or yeah. whatever, then that's your destiny. But I'm just lucky that it isn't in the family. And again, my mother had a great head of hair, and I think I take after her. So I'll tell you, it's, it's it, just genetic, and uh, not a lot you can do. It's a head of hair that uh, some people in their 20s would, would cry, weep openly to <laughs> see. <laughs> well, a lot of people think I, I dye it, I don't. It's just uh, the grey is coming in uniformly, not in tufts. Yeah. So I'm just getting lighter and lighter and lighter and fairer yeah. and blonder as well. Blonder, I think, is yeah, the yeah, right. <laughs> so it looks as if it's highlighted, but it isn't. No, it isn't. No. Remarkable. The, the idea is you're talking about your 80th birthday next year and the grey coming in in the same set. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. Pretty remarkable. Pretty remarkable. Well, yeah, bit, a bit lucky, really. Very good. Tell me a bit about what you're over for. You're over for okay. the, the uh, Specsavers sound barrier Star yeah. Wars. What exactly are well, they? Well, the uh, Specsavers are the most respected of the in the optical field, but they also, um, hearing aids are a funny field as well. Uh, you never quite know know the prices and, 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 and where to get them. So Specsavers have their hearing section and they will do free hearing tests. Now something like 80% of people will have their eyes tested and something like 10% will mm -hmm. have their ears tested but you should go along have a free test particularly young people with all the sound pollution and noises that they're in. And there's so many sophisticated hearing aids now, digital ones, that uh, it makes such a difference. A lot of people just put out with bad hearing. I, I, I'm, I've got 50% hearing, really? but that, that was an army thing uh, when I was 21. And I get away without w wearing hearing aids, by and large, but I miss things. I miss odd words, and mm. I don't like places. It can be isolating. I don't like uh, pubs with noisy background because I can't hear. Right. And some people who speak softly and quietly, I'll avoid them. But, uh, it can be isolating, but also you can be a figure of fun. Um, people laugh at you, suddenly say something, and they say, well, what do you think we've been talking about for the mm -hmm. last half an hour? Or you, you miss a key word. So it, it, you can, it can be embarrassing and it can be isolating, but you can go and get your, your ears tested. Uh, it's amazing what can be done to help. Why do you think there's such a disparity between people getting their eyes tested and people getting their hearing tested? I don't know what it tested? is. Yeah, I think the eyes, the deafness has always been regarded as the least important of the senses. I, I, I don't see why, because, as I said, it is very isolating isolating and does cut you off from things. Um, I, I don't know why that is. But I, know, the I, more, know. I think now Specsavers are doing a brilliant job by having this free offer of free. Yeah. Anyone can just go in and have your ears tested. And you may be surprised to find uh, how bad your, your hearing is and how much has been damaged. I wonder, is it a visibility thing? Because people, when they see a hearing aid on you, I don't know. They, no, they we, don't, they don't see them now. Really? Yeah. No, so you, no excuse, I've, I've not they? got mine on, but when I do, you cannot see them. They sort of on the top of the ear with a little colourless thing, a little wire mm. that goes. That's all you see. And in fact, with the way my hair is, I've got the hair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't tell you've got them in. So there's no excuse, really, is there? No, no, <laughs> no, there no, is no excuse. None Go and get your ears tested. And this, what well, you're actually over for, it, it's um, Achiever of the Year. Right, yeah, the Sound Barrier o Awards. What it is, someone who's got uh, impaired hearing, who's achieved something. And there are some amazing people who've done some amazing things. In your local area, they'll have heats and someone will win a regional thing, be, be the best achiever. And then in January, there's a national awards where the Achiever of the Year will be appointed, who will win all sorts of wonderful things. 
prize and the honour of winning. So it's a great thing and it draws attention mm. to the fact that Specsavers is what they can do for your hearing. Very good. You can nominate yourself or somebody else can nominate you. Yes, that's right. So. You can nominate yourself if you want. Yeah. And uh, there's some amazing guys uh, who have done some incredible, who are really totally deaf and have done some extraordinary things. But he does tend to be treated uh, lightheartedly or with... Lightheartedly or with fear, I think, almost, is the, is the word. You accept your, your sight. That just seems to be every day. But hearing, for some reason, I know people who just will do nothing about it. People who are quite hard of hearing yeah. and will do nothing about it. We tend to it. put up with it and, and you just think people are muttering all the time or people in films don't speak clearly. And, 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 but if you go and have your ears tested, you will find um, probably you've got quite a serious yeah. uh, damage to the hearing. So and that, that can, can be, be fixed rectified. so easily. So yours was in, you damaged yours in Mine was the a military, motor bomb yeah. in, uh, in, motor in the bomb. training, not, not, uh, not in action. Uh, you know the three inch mortar yeah. where they drop the bomb in, boom, and it goes up. Um, if, if you've got a live bomb here and we dropped it in and it didn't go off, so you've got this high explosive sitting there, um, the first IA or immediate action is just to gently shake it. Well, this guy over enthusiastically, very quickly pulled it upright while I was still above it. So you've got a very heavy bomb. Imagine the blast mm. that's sending down. I got the full blast oh of that. Um, I was going on leave the following day and I went home. My father was a doctor. I couldn't hear. He looked at my eardrums. They weren't burst. He said, oh, it'll get better. And it did get better. But I never realized what damage had been done. And uh, for years I just put up, thought I'm like that, and people just think I'm slightly odd. Our children are always saying, Daddy, you just walk past that person and they said something, they'll think you're arrogant, because I'll miss a mm. lot of things that people say. That's what it can come across as. Yeah, as you're arrogant, not paying attention, you're not, yeah, that's a bad way to be perceived. <laughs> a bad way to be perceived. Yeah, you've got a naughty twinkle in your eye. Do I really? Yeah, you do. I bet you're a devil when you really get going. I actually <laughs> am. <laughs> now that you, see it all, I can see Now it that you mention it. Um, <laughs> I have to ask you about Corey. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just talking talking about it this morning, and it was the 9th, the, the 9th of December 1960 when you started. Yeah. Isn't that incredible yeah. that your life could have been uh, wrapped up from so long ago in yeah. this TV series? It really is unique. Well, 50 years, I'm in the Guinness Book of Records, and you don't get any free Guinness for that, no. I'm in it, and the uh, Coronation Treat is in it, so uh, I'm just lucky that my job is in a vehicle that's gone on for that long, and uh, I still love it, and uh, while I can do it... What I, was your initial expectation of how long you'd oh, be in Coronation it, 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 Street? 11 weeks. 11 that's weeks. what it was. There, there was only... Uh, uh, 11 weeks, no, sorry, uh, uh, six weeks, 11 episodes, it was uh, six and a half weeks, um, or five and a half weeks. That's all that was written, and that's all that was going to be done. Um, but, of course, there were no soaps in those days, mm -hmm. and it was very cutting-edge drama. It was a time of realism, like Marlon Brando, James Dean in the films, um, John Osborne in the theatre. This was the realism in television, and it went boom, straight into the stratosphere. So Granada said, wow, you know, what have we got here? And we were all signed up for three years, and three it just years. took off. So no, nobody knew. Which, in an, acting, in an acting term, three-year contract is a huge deal to Oh, in those days. Yeah, it was, it was. Yeah. But then they thought that would be it. Right. And, um, so, 63 comes along, 64. Yeah. The Beatles are starting in America. <laughs> <laughs> the Beatles are only arriving in America. I know. And you're a veteran of Corrie. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's just a... It's a very simple thing. It's about people. And while the stories are character-based, mm -hmm. you cannot go wrong. You don't need big catastrophes and everything. Yeah. You can just... just about people, and you've got to care about the people. Mm. And it's got to be well written, and if I may say so, well acted, um, and believable. And we can go on forever. Has it ever been uh, reached a point where you thought it was moving away? You didn't like the story. Yeah, there once. was that middle sag when I'd, I'd ceased being. Uh, you know, I've had twenty-three girlfriends and three wives. <laughs> so forgive me if I'm tired, as I always. Twenty-three have. girlfriends. Yeah, Maybe uh, that's yeah, the secret of your youth. Emily, Stephanie Beecham, not bad. Not bad for an old guy. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Could be the secret of success. I mean, well, staying young, yeah, keep perhaps. It in perspective. Yes, but. Um, yeah, it, 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 there's no reason why it shouldn't go on forever, and, and I, I'm very lucky to be in work, particularly given the current climate, and while I can do it, I'll, I'll be there. Has the line between reality and Coronation Street ever blurred in your mind at all? 
Not for me, no. Uh, if I was playing, or so often quote, there's something like the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and I'd done that for 50 years, I would be pretty <laughs> contorted physically, <laughs> emotionally, and mentally. But Ken's a straight guy, uh, trying to keep the peace with his dysfunctional family. He's basically a nice chap. I like him, and I don't have any problems getting inside his head and being him. So, uh, no, I, I have no problems with that. You've never called your own wife Deirdre in a moment of passion? No, time. but my own father did call me Ken. Did he really? Yeah, he did. We were sitting watching it, watching an episode of The Street in the early days, been going about five years, and commercial break came up, and he said, oh, Ken, sorry, Bill. <laughs> so I thought, right, okay, you know, if my own father can do it, I'll never, ever blame it's, anyone for it. It's an understandable mistake. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I treat it as a nickname. I mean, people's... Yeah. We have the other problem. In the middle of scenes, yeah. I want to call Deirdre Ann right. and, and, and uh, Tracy Kate. So we understand that, that problem. Yeah. This so is why actors call everybody darling, because they can't can't remember their name. Makes perfect sense because we exist on the other side of the screen, where your on uh, your on screen persona is the reality for us. It's very hard to. Well, I know that. I know that. Well, that. well, just think about Joanna Lumley and Stephanie Beecham, and then that'll be all right. Yeah, that makes lots of sense <laughs> to me. All right. <laughs> um, the big scene you had with um, with with Dirty. The, the, the way you threw her against the wall. Is that, is that still the defining moment in the well, series Well, I say you? defining in so much as it had the most impact anything yeah. has ever had. And I put a lot of personal frustration into that, and it actually worked. And, and Anne, although she was actually literally in tears, she didn't stop on her lines, and we carried on playing the scene. And uh, we got awards for that scene, yeah. but I had put a lot of frustration into it. You had to dig deep for that. You? Did you go against the producers? To no, I didn't go against What happened? was um I mean, imagine this situation. Your wife's having an affair with somebody, and you while hate. you're having an argument with her, you couldn't imagine that, of course. Um, and while you're having an argument with her, there's a knock at the door, and the door opens, and the guy she's having an affair with is standing there saying, uh, You all right, Deirdre? You know, not bothering, is he? Um, you got any problems? You come to me. And I stood there like a wet, whatever a wet thing stands there like. And um, so when we came to do it, I, I said to the director, I'm sorry, but as an actor, I just have to believe Ken would do what he has to do. I cannot do that. So he said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I want to hit him. He said, well, we can't do that. It's not in the script. I said, okay, well, let me go to hit him, but then let, let Anne intervene. He said, yeah, great, okay, we'll do that. That, that will fit in nicely. But when we came to do it, I, I was far more heavily motivated than Anne was, so she was too slow. And the first time, I just sort of jumped in and, and, and she burst into tears and said, well, I didn't think it was going to be like that. And I said, well, it is. So we set it up again and I thought, she's not motivated, I'm going to have to grab hold of Anne and slam her against the door, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, what you saw was a real bit of frustration. I think we have a little clip of it. Cause the Are you going to show it? Yeah, we just have it on, on, just on, on the... Uh, I'll show it. We're on the radio. We? <laughs> <laughs> so we're yeah. going to listen to it, will you? About your sordid little bit on the side with a spiv like board with. At least he's human. At least he wanted me. I wanted you! You never wanted me, Ken, or kids, or anything. It's your pride that's hurt, that's all. That's not true, I'm afraid. I loved you. I'm the man you married. I'm exactly the same now as I was then, and if that wasn't what you wanted, why did you marry me? Oh, Ken. Ignore it. No. Why did you put the phone down on me? It's Ken, he knows. I've told him everything. Just get out Ken, of this house. Shut up! I'm warning you. Get out of this house. Let's go. Let's go. 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 That's a wonderful scene. It really <laughs> is. <laughs> it's still very powerful. You got the message there. You know, I wasn't going to let him say anything. At least he's human, she said to you. Honestly, mm -hmm. what a terrible thing to say to a man. Awful. It was good stuff there, and we all cared. And uh, it was that moment was the defining moment in the way that. Up till then, tabloids had never really talked about soaps very much. Suddenly, they really realised the power. It was on the front page of every tabloid. It was on the news. Manchester United flashed it up in the screen at half-time. Ken stays with Deirdre. <laughs> and um, every, from then on, soap awards, soap magazines. Yeah. Every paper had a reporter that dealt with soap. It started the whole business of, of the soap 
dominating the papers yeah, the way they have. Yeah, the way they have. Come yeah, on. incredible. Um, so uh, have we fifty more years left in us? Uh, yeah, yes. well, fifty. What well, maybe? Hundred forty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, why not? Why not? Why not? Medical Showing science. Showing no signs of... Yeah. Uh, no, no. Well, literally, as I say, while I can, and um, and while they want me, um, I love it, and I enjoy it. I'll, it's good for me. It keeps me out of mystery. Right, we'll, we'll continue to enjoy it. And William, a pleasure meeting you. And, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Are you getting rid of me now? Yes, I'm afraid they are I'm taking go, you away I? somewhere oh, else. They're, they're going to take me, me away. Yeah, well, I me. knew that day was coming. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it wasn't far off. They're telling me there's somewhere else you want to go. All right. I'm afraid. Okay. But, uh, William, thanks for very much oh, thank you. It's an no, I enjoyed it. And watch that twinkle in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad.